Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Protecting expensive multi-million dollar aircraft is a full-time job for the U.S. military. In order to preserve crucial components and reduce wear and tear, it's important that the amount of time aircraft are exposed to the elements be reduced as much as possible. This is the concept behind the airplane hangar, a term referring to any building or structure designed to hold an aircraft. These structures can be made from a wide range of materials, either temporary or permanent. All that matters is that they protect valuable aircraft from weather, direct sunlight, and sand. Hangers also play a role in the maintenance process, as they have enough space to take apart, repair, and replace even the largest aircraft components. In the case of massive cargo planes like the C-17 Globemaster, it's essential that the hangar be able to accommodate not just the aircraft itself, but also the components necessary for regular maintenance and repairs. The Globemaster is a linchpin in the United States Air Force. First introduced back in 1995, it has already proven itself a vital military transport vehicle through multiple conflicts and humanitarian efforts. The plane itself is massive, with a length of 174 feet and a wingspan of 169 feet. For this reason, it can only be stored in the largest and most spacious hangars. Once inside, ground crews will go about performing a variety of cleaning and repair duties. One of the most important processes is corrosion prevention. Performed every six months, at a minimum, this involves carefully washing and scrubbing all exposed sections of the plane. The goal is to remove dirt, dust, oil, grease, salt, and other foreign materials that could corrode and weaken the plane's structure or systems. The primary job of the C-17 is to move cargo and troops from one place to another. For this reason, it features an 88-foot by 18-foot cargo bay. This is big enough to hold 102 paratroopers, 134 troops, or multiple armored strike vehicles. All in all, it can carry about 170,000 pounds of cargo while traveling up to 520 miles per hour. Despite its size, the C-17 boasts some incredible capabilities. 
For instance, it can take off and land on runways as short as 3,000 feet. Another innovative feature is the thrust reversers on the engines. These direct exhaust air upward and forward, minimizing the chance of foreign object damage when the plane is operating from an unpaved airstrip. Additionally, the aircraft holds more than 20 world records, including for payload to altitude and short takeoff and landing. As impressive as the C-17 is, it is far from the most advanced aircraft in the U.S. Air Force arsenal. The B-2 Spirit, however, is packed with state-of-the-art design features and aeronautics. Commonly referred to as the Stealth Bomber, the B-2 is one of the most recognizable aircraft in the world. With its 172-foot wingspan, it also necessitates an enormous storage hangar to protect its radar-absorbent coating from constant sunlight. Despite this extra-wide wingspan, the B-2 is only 69 feet long and 17 feet high. This low-profile design is one of the reasons it is so hard to detect. With its max speed of 630 miles per hour and the ability to carry up to 40,000 pounds in munitions, the B-2 is a formidable modern aircraft. That said, the B-2 spends most of its time inside to protect the special radar-absorbent coating, one of its primary stealth components. It takes a large ground crew team to get the B-2 Spirit ready for combat, even if that combat is merely a training exercise. During 2021's Global Strike Challenge, different units compete in various trials related to bomber and intercontinental ballistic missile operations and maintenance. Those teams that are able to clock the fastest loading times are awarded trophies at the end of the competition. Here, ground crews load conventional munitions onto a B-2 bomber using different vehicles and tools. Despite the competition focusing on speed, it is absolutely essential that these weapons be handled with the utmost care and delicacy, just like the plane itself. In fact, the B-2 has one of the most integral maintenance processes of any military aircraft. Every seven years, the planes need to be completely overhauled to stay undetectable, a process that costs more than $60 million. Even during regular maintenance, Technicians are tasked with crawling into vents, engine intakes, and bays, carefully searching components for signs of damage or wear and tear. To date, only 21 B-2 stealth bombers have been made. This has a lot to do with the construction and operating costs of the aircraft as well as a renewed focus on ballistic missiles as opposed to the traditional aircraft-based bombing. Still, the B-2 has repeatedly proven itself in combat, serving in the Kosovo War, Iraq, Afghanistan, and Libya. 
On land, hangars are typically very spacious. Those hangar bays aboard U.S. aircraft carriers are a different story altogether. Here, flight crews and maintenance personnel are tasked with operating in extremely cramped spaces. The hangar bay is typically located about two decks below the flight deck. The average space is about 685 feet in length, 25 feet high, and 110 feet wide. This is about two-thirds the size of the entire vessel, and it can hold around 60 aircraft, as well as spare parts, fuel tanks, and even jet engine testing areas. To prevent the spread of fire in the case of an emergency, hangar bays are divided into four zones, divided by sliding blast doors. There are also elevators on the side of each bay, allowing aircraft to be moved from the bay to the flight deck. These elevators are massive, with most able to simultaneously hold two 74,000-pound fighter jets. Even so, Moving these aircraft is a slow and steady operation. Even the slightest wrong move could end up damaging millions of dollars worth of equipment. Even the largest aircraft hangar bay cannot hold all of the aircraft carrier's planes, helicopters, and other vehicles. That's why there are almost always several aircraft parked on the flight deck, typically near the sides of the carrier. While it's true that these planes are subject to corrosion from saltwater and other threats, their presence ensures that the carrier and its crew will always be able to respond to threats quickly and effectively. In the end, no matter where an aircraft is located, its usefulness will ultimately be dictated by how quickly it can get in the air. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.